right. All right. Hello, everyone. You are watching and listening to the Croc and Moms podcast, and I'm your host, Lisa Marie. Today, I'll be cooking an easy recipe live for you, and also, I am going to be interviewing a special guest for some extra flavor. All right, guys. So, I know it's almost summer is almost near. We don't really want to talk about those fall recipes yet, unless you're a big fall fan, which I am, but I love summer and I don't want to say goodbye to it. But since my kids are starting school in two weeks, I figured I might as well start busting out those awesome soup recipes. And I know when you guys are thinking about slow cookers in the fall, what do you think of? Chili, you think of the fall soups and all that goodness. So what better way than to introduce, I know we're hanging on to summer as much as we can, but with the kids going back to school, I'm busting out my favorite cheesy potato soup. And it's so easy to do. And what I love about the slow cooker is that soups, oh my goodness, they taste so good just slow cooking all day and coming home to a warm soup on those cold days. But since it's still summertime, you know, it's also good to have some soup as well after going to the pool and enjoying those summer activities as much as you can. With me and my four boys, well, three boys, almost another one in, in a few days, uh, I need to start freezing my stuff. I like to do those easy, freezy um, slow cooker meals too. So I'm making my soup and then I'm going to freeze it. So then I'll have it for when I have the baby. And also, you know, fall's coming too. So like I said, we're going to be busting out some more soup recipes and fall recipes as well. And I hope everybody had a wonderful summer. And, you know, I hope everyone has a wonderful school year too. So let's get back to our recipe. I am making a cheesy potato soup. And there's a lot of uh, extra varieties that we're going to be doing with it too. But I'm just going to do a traditional cheesy potato soup today. And then I will show you some also extra flavor that we're going to add too. So for my recipe, it's really easy to do. The cheesy potatoes, you, if you, you know what, we are always so busy and especially the slow cooker is supposed to ease up time in your life, right? So instead of like peeling your potatoes, which you can get five of those potatoes and peel them and dice them and put them in your slow cooker if you don't have the frozen kind. But what I did was I got a bag of the frozen diced potatoes and that's going to save you so much time peeling and doing all that and you're going to put that right in the slow cooker so my ingredients i'm going to talk about today and then we're going to bring our special guests on we're going to cook with her and then interview her okay so let's go over our ingredients today we have um for the cheesy potato soup you're going to use um a bag of diced uh hash browns or dice these are diced southern potatoes and then you're going to get cream cheese and you're just going to get a block of that we also are going to get three and a half ounces of cheddar cheese and i also love getting the block cheese i talked about before with my homemade mac and cheese recipe that the block cheese does so much better than the shredded cheese but i'm always about use what you have at home so right now we're busy we have our shredded cheese and that's what we're using today you're also going to use one onion and you're going to dice it up and you're going to have a little bit of salt and pepper you use one fourth teaspoon of each and you're also going to get a can of your cream of chicken that's 10 and a half ounces of your can of cream of chicken i love to use low sodium because the less salt the better <laughs> and then also i get one container of chicken stock or chicken broth whatever you have with you and you can also make your homemade um, your own if you have like a chicken bouillon and if you don't have chicken stock, you can just use a cup of water and then take your chicken bouillon and put that in and boom. So basically, like I said, the slow cooker is versatile. Our moms on Crock-Pot Moms are there to help you. So if you ever have a question on, you know, hey, I don't have this in my pantry. What else can I use? Believe me, I'll be there to hit the comment or the 1.2 million followers that are there will too. <laughs> and it's neat to see we have members from all around the globe on our page. So it's nice to see what people in Texas are cooking, in New York, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and all over. So speaking of New York, let's bring on one of my amazing guests. She's an author, and her name is Lori Gelman. And she just came out with a book. It uh, smells like tween spirit. So let's bring her on to the show today. 
Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Oh, yay. Look, she has her book with her, too. Yeah, you should have one. Where's yours? I have. Well, I have your picture ready to go. <laughs> you know what? I know your audio's out as well. My audio's out? Yeah, your, your audio's coming out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, the audio book. Yes. My audio now. I'm like, can't you hear me? Do I have to do hand puppets? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. No, the, audio book, the audio <laughs> book is out. It's yeah, out. I should have said that. Your, <laughs> no, your audio recording of your book is out, and I've been enjoying it. Oh, thank you. I get a lot of um, really good feedback because I read, read my books myself, and I guess a lot of authors don't do that. Yes. Um, that's like so a proof. I, I, I don't think anybody else could read Jen because Jen Dixon is is my inner voice. So yes, yeah, Jen Dixon, man. How did you like even? Come? We're gonna have to get into that uh, and all that as well. But first, we're gonna cook. So, do you like cheesy potato soup? I've actually never had cheesy potato soup, but I am a huge fan of the crock pot. Huge. Awesome. I do many many things in it. One of my favorites is a beef stew in the winter time. Okay. Yes. And that's, we were talking about the fall and the beginning of the show. And I know summer, we don't want to talk about summer ending at all. We right? don't, no. <laughs> no, but what's nice. I mean, you said your girls are going to be going to school soon and you know, my boys are going to school. It's like, boo. I mean, I love having them home. How about you? Um, well, they're, my girls are, you know, 20 and 18. So or actually <laughs> 21 and 19. So I, I'm actually fine with them wherever they, you know, they're, they're, pretty much their own entities. Uh, when they were little, I always loved having them home in the summer. I never saw the point of sending them away to camp because yes. that's, that's your time to spend with them. I agree. Like, I know people are like sometimes ready for their kids to go back. I understand, oh, you know, busy yeah. schedules, like it's time. But for me, I'm like, no, I don't want them to go. You know, I'm like really bummed that <laughs> they didn't go. I Hold on for one second. I'm going to use this, my, my kiddo's bubble guppy. That was wild. <laughs> I had something muted and my little ones were my, look at that. Sorry. <laughs> mind of its own. Yeah. Well, I have a one-year-old and he loves his bubble guppies. And for some reason it was like popping on and off, but <laughs> it's so funny. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. <laughs> Live stream. There's nothing like it. Nothing like it. I'm just turning it off. I don't know what's going on here. Tell me about what is your favorite crock pot recipe out of everything? Love crock pots. Love the recipes. And, and there's, there's like a never ending list of things that you can make. I guess I'm hosting the show now. Anyway, there's a never ending list of things. Oh, there she's back. Okay. <laughs> I turned it off. A big chance to host a show. Darn it. I was pausing it, and this is so wild. It was like unpausing. So who knows? That was, just, <laughs> that was like the universe just, you know, playing a funny joke on us. <laughs> um, well, you know what? What That's what I love about the crock pot, too. I was saying, if you don't have the frozen diced tomato or diced potatoes you can go ahead and just use a bag of regular potatoes it's just sure, yeah if you don't have labor intensive but sure yeah. yeah if you don't have chicken stock use chicken bouillon <laughs> yeah use what you got so today i want to get to this interview so let's get quickly to this potato soup i'm going to show you guys how to make it and it's really easy to do i always love to spray my slow cooker with cooking spray or getting those non-stick, um, those slow cooker bags, or also too, you can get a turkey bag and cut half of it and put it around the slow cooker. And when you're done cooking, it's like, boom, throw that thing away and you have easy cleanup. All right, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to, um, I told you the recipe, now I'm ready to give you the directions. So what I do is I take my container of chicken broth and I put that right in my slow cooker. And like I said, I always spray my slow cooker, even when it comes to soups, just so it's easy clean up at the end. And I know that you think, wow, soups, you shouldn't have to do that, but I always just put even a little oil in there, rub it around the pan or spray it. So I use one container of chicken broth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I am gonna use my diced onion right here. And I just use one of it, boom, already in there. I'm also going to use my bag. I have a two pound bag of diced potatoes right here. And if you don't have frozen diced potatoes, you can also use the frozen hash browns too, which are awesome. Are those already cooked? 
Yeah, so easy. And then you're also going to get a can of cream of chicken soup. I like to use the low sodium kind because, I mean, especially with my pregnancy right now or just life in general, less salt, the better. <laughs> are you a healthy conscious a lot? In our family, in our house, we really are. My husband's an excellent cook, and but he's all about growing his own vegetables. And I mean, he would, he would literally pass out if he saw you using bags of frozen potatoes. He'd be like, oh, no. Like it's the end of the world. <laughs> and your husband is Michael Gauman, right? Yeah. And he produces Live with Kelly and Ryan. That's wild. He's been the executive producer on that show ever since it was Regis and Kathy Lee. So wow. Almost 40 years, believe it that, or not. That's amazing. And I think that's a really hard job to do, by the way. Like, I don't know. He, he, he's, he's very busy. He, you know, he has to keep it at number one. And it's been number one for, what, 35 years? It's crazy. Oh, moly. Right I mean, and so how does that work, like, with you guys? Like, I mean, he's always, I mean, do you kind of help him at times on the show? I saw with the pandemic, you were oh, there. Yeah, once in a while. I mean, it's, it's, it's really his job and his, his yeah. life. He comes home and complains to me. And that's really my part of the, the whole situation, but yeah, um, he has a really busy, hard job. And that's why I ended up, you know, earlier in my career, in my daughter's lives, I left my career so that I could be home and be with them and sort of be the CEO of the Gelman family and just make yeah. sure they had what they needed. Hey, just being a C stay at home mom is so hard as well, because I'm, a, I'm a master's degree therapist and, um, when the pandemic happened and my blog, my husband's also a therapist too. And um, we just kind of had a, I had to be a stay at home mom. And ever since I've been a stay at home mom and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm, that's a whole nother job in itself. And I'm the CEO of that company. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely give much credit to you and what you do and also just supporting Michael. And I love that he cooks um, fresh things. So if Michael is watching or are you talking to him about it, tell him you can use regular potatoes. And I always promote fresh vegetables instead of the dice. But this is like, I'm in a hurry, mom. Well, exactly. Mom. In a hurry. Moms are in a hurry. I mean, I'm, you know, if you have the luxury of peeling and chopping potatoes, Yes. Go for it. That's fantastic. But if not, it's always great to have these alternatives. Exactly. Like today, we are going to be cooking potato soup, and then I'm getting the boys, and we're going to the pool. <laughs> so, nice. and I did my hands. I don't want to be peeling potatoes, but again, if you want to use fresh vegetables in the recipes, I always say go for it too. But if you have the frozen ones, bring it on as well. So so far, we have our chicken broth in there our onions in there, our diced potatoes, and then also you're gonna get three and a half ounces of shredded cheese, cheddar cheese. Now, I love using the block, but like I said, today, I'm in a hurry. I'm here with Lori Gelman. I need to interview her and hear all about her book. So boom, I'm getting that out of the way. All right, you're also gonna use a block of cream cheese and you're gonna cube it, okay? But if you don't have time to cube it, it's okay. Boom. I'm popping that in. <laughs> no matter what, it's going to be creamy. Then I'm going to go ahead and use my can of cream and chicken soup. Now, Mr. Gelman, if you don't want to use canned soup, because a lot of people tell me, I don't like those cream and chickens in my slow cooker recipes. And they're in a lot, like cream and mushroom, if you're doing even beef stew. But you can actually make your own homemade cream of chicken. So Google that if you guys don't want to use the can. But today, I'm doing a little health conscious by the low sodium. <laughs> low it's sodium or no flavor boost. Yeah, what? It's a good flavor boost. Yeah, I agree. And like I said, if you don't want to use the cream of chicken, uh, you can make your own. And also to add some chicken bouillon. All right, so boom. I have a little bit of salt and pepper in here. One fourth teaspoon. I'm also going to use, I'm going to put garlic seasoning in that too. So pepper right there, that's one fourth seasoning. And then I have my garlic powder, or if you want to use fresh garlic, you're going to use one fourth teaspoons of that too. Put that baby in. All right. So I know it looks wild, but this is it. That's all. And then it's going to cook and merge. Now, what I do is you can either just put it in like that, but I do give it like a nice mix. Just, you know, get all that flavor in there, you know? But, you know, because of its a crock pot, you don't have to. That's yeah. the crazy thing about the crock pot. Exactly. And you, you don't know, even have to stir if you don't have time. No. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing, too, everything's so expensive right now 
What I love about the slow cooker is you can use more inexpensive meats and it's still going to turn out great because they're slow cooking all day. And I kind of learned that day one with slow cooking 101. My grandmother, I mean, actually my nanny taught me that, but you don't need to buy those high end meats because the slow cooker is just putting is cooking it all day and you don't have to spend a lot on those very expensive meats, especially right now. And speaking of my nanny, by the way, today's her birthday. My nanny, she's my Italian grandma, my mom's mom, and she's so sweet and I love her. And I just wanted to give her a shout out today. <laughs> happy birthday, nanny. Yeah, happy birthday, nanny. She, by the way, she's been watching your husband for years <laughs> and watching live with Kelly and Ryan. So she just couldn't even believe it. She's like, are you serious? And oh, my mom, on. Yeah, by the way, my mom thought you were fake. She's like, oh, Lisa Marie, that's not the real person. <laughs> mom, I Wait, really want to show you my picture in the book because I am the real person. There I am. There I am. It's me. <laughs> look, look, mom, there she is. <laughs> and a quick shout out to my mother in law as well that's watching. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we want Thanksgiving to be a happy meal. Exactly, right? So, oh my gosh, this looks actually really good when you do mix it up even better. Here, I got to show you this. And yeah, I'm going to get an overhead cam, but I do this all myself. So what do you get? to do? <laughs> but this is it. Mm, look at that. That looks good. Are you going to put any herbs in it? Yeah, actually, I'm going to put some chives in it when I'm done. Like when I'm done, what I do is I'm going to cook this on high for three and a half hours, or you could cook it on low for six hours. You're also going to cover it too. And then when you're done, you can either add, um, like I like to put chives on it. A lot of people like to put bacon on it as well. If you, if you like bacon, you can sprinkle that on as well and uh, some sour cream too, but it's going to look so good. And uh, I have an after as well, but I didn't put my chives on it, but I'll show you what it looks like afterward. So basically I wanted you to come on today because I love your books. I think they're absolutely awesome. You have this character, uh, Jenna Dixon, Jen Dixon, not Jenna. This is my, this is my after soup, by the way. Yum. Yum. <laughs> it's so good. I'm hungry now. <laughs> so let's talk about your book. It is called Smells Like Tween Spirit. <laughs> And wow, look at that. Oh my wow. God. <laughs> there I am. Picture you sent me. I mean, by the way, she told me she has no makeup on and I'm like, no fair. Look how gorgeous you are. <laughs> I'm telling you that is all good lighting and I'm <laughs> sitting on a blues couch. That's, that's yeah. a given. <laughs> and you look gorgeous today as well. And we're just so blessed to have you on. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about your book and uh, your inspiration for it as well. Well, um, I don't know if you know this, it's the fourth in a series of books about Jen Dixon, the first one awesome. was Class Mom. And <laughs> you'll relate to this because she was a 45-year-old mother with a kindergartner and uh, college-age girls. And I think that's exactly kind of where you're going to be. Yes, because I'll be 40 <laughs> next month. I'm having a baby in like 10 days. So yes, my kid will be in kindergarten when I am 45. And I have one going to high school right now and one going to kindergarten. So I'm going to be right where Jen Dixon is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So anyway, you can relate. She was the older class mom. She um, didn't want to be involved, but she decided, you know, this time around, because she has the two older daughters that she definitely would be. So she reluctantly becomes the class mom and hilarity ensues because it really is the most thankless job you could possibly ever do um, in the history of jobs. Uh, so that continued on to the second book and the third book. And then this one is um, Smells Like Tween Spirit. Everybody gets a little bit older in each book. Jen faces, you know, her own personal um, issues with getting older and as an aging woman and battling weight and, and um, a sex drive that just isn't going anywhere. And, and it all starts to happen, you know, in your 50s. Oddly enough, Laurie Gelman going through the same things. So I guess <laughs> this is my way of like dealing with it as I write it out in a book. Yeah. But at the same time, her son is, has gone through uh, primary school. He's now in middle school. Uh, for, for the fourth book, he's uh, in seventh grade and he decided he wants to be a wrestler. So that's where Smells Like Tween Spirit, pretty much the, the title comes from. Yeah, it smells like my 14 year old's room at times. <laughs> so nasty, isn't it? Shower. Yeah, like every day I'm like, shower. I have to always say, like, he's so, he has great hygiene. It's just constant. Like, I even had to talk to the doctor because they said online, you don't shower all the time, your skin could dry. And I told my son, no. 
every day. <laughs> like, it's, it's sometimes two and three times. It's just, it, it exudes off them. It's hormones. It's growing. It's hair. It's sometimes hair every day, day. I'm like, you got to get in the shower. And he, he looks at me yeah. like I'm crazy. Like I'm already baking and brush his teeth in the morning. And then, yeah. <laughs> you know, these things should come naturally. And believe me, if you ever do have a girl, maybe that, that will happen. <laughs> they, they actually do their own, you know, yeah, because they, they go through other things as well. Like I have nieces, so I know my my sister in law and my sister. She had my sister has two, and my sister in law Danielle has one. And I just know that they'll be, you know, my actually my sister, her, my oldest niece is going to be entering that phase, you know, of life. And yeah, it's going to be she's going to be dealing with all that too, because not just the boys, the girls. No, are it isn't just the boys. You're right; they have a whole different set of um, issues. I mean, yeah. you're not going to get through it easily, no matter which way you go, whether you had the boys or the girls. But it all turns out well in the end. Yeah, and parenting. I always tell everybody, like the moms out there and the dads, like no matter how old they are, there's always different issues and change. And so it doesn't, I mean, it, parenting can get easy, but I think it's always hard. And sometimes yeah, they always say little kids, little problems, big kids, big problems. And it's so true. Like you, you, I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you this story, but my daughter like hit, hit the, the house with the car yesterday. She came home and she thought she'd put it in park and she take her foot off the brake and uh, it was still going, so she was moving slowly, and she panicked and thought she was hitting the brake, and she hit the gas and slammed into the front of the house. And oh my gosh, is she okay? She's <laughs> fine. We're all fine, and you know, she—I I couldn't even be mad at her because she was so upset with herself. Yeah. But at some point, with kids, like you just can't berate them because they're—they're they're so beating themselves up for what they did. So it's so um, true. And that happened to me, by the way, when I was young, I was like 17 years old. And I just, I thought I was in, I thought I was in uh dry or reverse, but I was in drive and I had a little bit of an issue and I was such a good driver. You know, I had, my mom took me out. I never really had any accidents. And then sometimes you just have a moment and oh, I have those now. Are you kidding me? Have them. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So it's like always something and we, we're learning it and then we're going through it with our kids at every stage of life. Like at that stage, you're dealing with insurance and showing her how to deal with insurance and, you know, what what's next. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm very scared of the driving. We have we have two years <laughs> until he wants to even start. But that's a whole nother thing as well. Again, bigger kids, bigger problems. <laughs> yes. So what is going on with Jen? So I don't want to give too much away, but um, what, like, so with this book, um, what else is going on with Jen Dixon? I mean, well, because her son wants to wrestle and there are no more class moms in middle school, she becomes a mat mom, which means she's involved in the, the subculture of the, uh, the wrestling moms. Okay. And she's never been a sports mom before. So she's really learning a lot about that <laughs> and, you know, meeting the dynamics of the other moms and the competitive sports moms and, and uh, that whole world. She's also dealing with her um, aging parents as we all are. We all have yes. kids and then we have our parents that need us as well. And she is um, hitting the next level of that with her parents. And uh, uh, she's also, she, you know, she's continuing her career as a spin instructor and, trying to get to know some of her riders and, and um, yeah. the fun that involves Do they don't have anything to do with like the spinning classes at all in the book? <laughs> I, well, I love spinning and I used to, you know, from when the kids were in kindergarten, I started and I just adored it. And yeah. I thought um, as I was getting older, a, a great way to stay in shape would be to become a spin instructor, but I yeah. was too lazy. So I, I let Jen do it. <laughs> Jen, Jen wasn't lazy at all. She's the one that was like, I'm going to do this. And so she went ahead and did it and, and is yeah. loving it. Jen's like your alter ego, like have her do she it all. Is. Yeah. <laughs> she says the, the quiet parts out loud that I just wouldn't dare. <laughs> that is so cool. So what inspired you to actually write this book, to go for it? I know it's been in your system. You were like, okay, you, I mean, it's it's so awesome. I love, I, it's very easy to follow and relate to. And a lot of the other moms too, like you guys have to get the whole series. But what kind of like made you actually take that step of like, you know what? I, I know I'm multitasking with my kids and my household, but what made you kind of just do it? <laughs> Um, I needed a project. I needed something to do. My girls were getting older. They were both in high school and mm -hmm. I am a creative person. I wasn't going to be able to go back into television because I kind of aged out. Um, 
and I needed something to do. So I decided um, I was going to write some kind of book. And I didn't know what I was going to write. I tried a children's book. I tried um, another type of book. But um, I was at lunch with my agent at the time. And uh, he's, he was talking to me about you know why my children's book didn't sell. And my phone was going off because people wanted to know when their conference times were. And I just went on this incredible diatribe about like what is wrong with these parents i'm like they're that's like i have 30 children they don't remember their conference times just check your email and i was like going on and on and uh, he started laughing he said Lori, that's your book and i said <laughs> why I, said, I would rather kill myself i'd rather stick needles in my eyes than write about being a class mom it's the worst job and he's like exactly right. so um i found my passion and i wrote mm -hmm. the first book and uh i got out you know all my creative energy, but also all my frustrations from the job. And, you yeah. know, at one point they, they um, fired me from being class mom in my fifth year because I wrote a salty email and it was a whole thing. So it was, you know, kind of revenge book, kind of a revenge book, the first one, but yeah. um, it made me feel a lot better to write it. And then after that, it just became, people wanted more of Jen Dixon. So I kept writing. Yeah, that is so awesome. And it's kind of like the theme of my whole episode TV show that I have going on. It seems like sure. everyone that's been on talks about, you know, finding their passion. And it's not just like at first, it's just, you know, people just thinking, okay, maybe I should do this or that. But when you really like get real with yourself and find out what, what are you really about? Yeah. What can you talk about forever? What can you do like all day long? And I feel like when you find your passion, it just all comes together and look at you. Well, it's not even just, it's, it's passion is a great word. If you don't have to love it, I don't love writing yeah. because I find it excruciatingly hard to sit by myself with a blank screen and make up stories, okay. but um, it's, it makes me sing inside. Right. You know what I mean? Like as much as it is, I hate it. I love it. So yeah. that's where you, that's where you find it. And it was my third act. I'd already had my career and then my children. So I needed something. And yeah. Well, I like that you said that because um, for me too, like my passion, I love doing this, but it also scares the crap out of me. And I didn't, I don't, I don't like being on camera, which is funny. Like I don't mind doing the iHeartRadio or the radio station, but I don't like being filmed. I'm so worried about what I look like or if I sound stupid or, and I'm like behind the radio, they can't see me like going, ah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I force myself to do it because it makes me light up and I love it. And, and, and wild things are happening from it. So I and think you have such a happy show. I mean, you're talking about food and you're talking about, I mean, you have so much joy in you talking about it that it just, it's infectious. It's great. Oh, thank you. There is some kind of wild thing that comes out of me. I mean, like I am like this every day with the kids or like when I go places or I go shopping, I love to light my cat, anyone I'm with, like a cashier, I, I find out who they are and talk to them. And my husband or my family will be like, do you know them? I'm like, no, <laughs> but I love to give them joy and happiness. And when I film, it like comes out too. And maybe that's just to kind of sprinkle that into the world as well. And when I'm doing <laughs> it's like, I love cooking. I have a big Italian family and um, I also love interviewing people and being a master's degree therapist, it kind of like all merged together because I know my mom was like, you went to school for your master's. What are you doing with this Internet stuff? But it <laughs> all worked out because I did find something that just lights me up. And that's what you did. And I'm so glad you did because I, I need this book. <laughs> so where can we find it and how can we support you? And um, other people can also purchase your book. Well, you can buy the book wherever books are sold. I like it if you go to an independent bookstore because I think they need more support than the, the big box stores, you know. I agree. So mm -hmm. if you can find it at an independent bookstore, great. Otherwise, you can order it online. You can get the audio book. Um, and if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at Lori Gelman and uh, Facebook. I'm Lori Gelman. Twitter, I'm Lori M. Gelman. <laughs> <laughs> Not hard to find at all. She's Lori Gellman, guys. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, Lori, for being on the show. I cannot believe we're already out of time. It goes so fast. Well, here. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You were right. You said it was going to be quick, and it was. My goodness. Yes. It's quick. It's fun. We're filled with laughter here. And um, you really blessed us with today with your presence and just your book, what you're doing in the world. It's fun. Us, us moms need those kind of books. Like we really do. So Thank continue you. to write. I'm really excited to see what, what, what what's next in her life. <laughs> so I hope you're already <laughs> the 
next book <laughs> because I know I'm going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. No, I haven't started it, but I will. Yeah. Right now, as soon as I get off with you, I'm getting started. <laughs> well, guys, please check out Lori Gelman. Lori, thank you so much for being on the show today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yes. And again, check her book out, Smells Like Tween Spirit. And again, you can go to the local bookstore, but you can also find it on Amazon and all over. And I love the audio because that's what I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be finishing up in the hospital reading that. <laughs> And um, guys, stay tuned for more awesome recipes. Follow us on Crock-Pot Moms on Facebook. And um, stay tuned for more awesome episodes just like this. Um, they're going to keep on coming at the Crock-Pot Moms. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>